Okay, so here we are with the Braun 1500 watt 240 volt kick space heaters. These heaters are pre wired for 220, 240 in the box for 1500 watts. However, they are also able to work in a 120 mode, 110, 115, 120 mode. Okay, but the directions aren't very clear. And if you're a jack of all trades like me and a master at none, takes a minute to read the schematics <clears throat> so this is the way it comes in its OEM condition out of the box and this is wired for 220 so when we read the instruction manual it's a little confusing because it's showing the, the box here with the correct terminals 3 and 4 on this side but it's showing the alarm lights on the other side on the left side well, in this box, there's no alarm lights on the left side. They're on the right side. So it takes a minute to look at it. But I wanted to make this video because I couldn't find any other instructions online on it. Just a simple way to switch these from the stock 240, 220, 240 wiring position to the 120 wire position. And, and then also be able to alternate between uh, 750 watts and 1400 watts of operation. So... Here we go. The first thing you do is, if 120 volts AC circuit is to be used, make wiring changes as follows. Disconnect the white wire from heater element terminal two and connect it to terminal four. So therefore you come over here. Okay, this is the control knob right here. And when you come in here, you'll see right down here at the bottom, there's two connections. Well, if you zoom in close, you can actually see there's a number stamped on there. That's number two, there's number one, and there's number two. Okay, and what is it telling us? It's telling us to disconnect the white wire from number two and connect it to terminal number four. So here's terminal two. We are gonna disconnect this white wire from terminal two, pull it out. We're gonna bring it over to this side and they left an extra connection down here on terminal four. You can see there's an extra little slot down there underneath the red wire. And as you can see, that is terminal four. So this other one, we already did it. So we disconnected the white wire, strung it over here. Well, first of all, you have to cut, cut the zip ties off, okay? Then you, you disconnect this white wire from terminal two, string it over here to terminal number four, and you can see there's a connection for it at the bottom there, right in there. Okay, that's step number one to work on the 120 volt mode. Now in that mode, it's gonna be operating at 750 watts. So if you're on a 15 amp circuit breaker, it's gonna be below half of the wattage because you can see you're only running about 6.3 amps. That's the, that's the condition that we wanna use this heater in, however, you can see number two, if you wanna go up to 1500 watts, which is 12 and a half amps, you can add the short red jumper wire between terminals one and two. So therefore in the box, in the bag, they provide you with this disconnected jumper wire. And if we did wanna operate it at the 1500 watts, then we would connect this jumper wire between terminals one and two as shown there and as described here under number two. <clears throat> now it gets a little tricky when we go to step number three. Number three is remove the alarm light wire leads from terminals one and three of the high temperature limit. Okay, <clears throat> it takes a while to figure this out, but this is the high temperature limit on the top. Here's the fan motor in here. Here's the high temperature limit sensor these are the lights, the warning lights that you would see from the front that would go on. But now that we're not on the 220 mode, what we're doing is we're disconnecting one of these. So we are removing the leads from terminals one and three. So what we did is we disconnected one of the lights completely and we just take the one that's easiest to disconnect and remove it from terminal one on this side, and this is three on this side. <clears throat> so when we move over to here, we see I already disconnected a light. 
okay it was connected to terminal one on this side and it was connected to <clears throat> terminal three on this side which i disconnected i know in this case you see another wire here but i did disconnect it so <clears throat> that particular wire that's all you're doing is you're just removing one of the lights from the equation from terminal one and terminal three <clears throat> then the next step is Remove the white wire lead from limit terminal one and reconnect it at limit terminal three. So all you're doing is you're taking the wire off of the one and you're moving it over to the three. So again, we see the white wire here on one and we are moving it over to three. So you can see once this This is the OEM setup, but once you disconnect that other lamp, once you disconnect the, the, the lamp here, the white, the red lamp, there's only one wire left that's easy to disconnect on the terminal right here. Okay, don't touch the wires down below here in this, in this black sheeting. You're only messing with the wires that are accessible on the terminals. So once you disconnect the emergency light, from this, then there's only one more white wire to disconnect that's available on a terminal. Because again, this, this one down here is in the sheath. We're not gonna touch that. So this one here is the one they're talking about. <clears throat> Remove white wire lead from limit terminal one and reconnect it at limit terminal three. So we disconnect this white one here from terminal one, which this is terminal one. You unplug this wire and you plug it in back over here underneath where the other light was plugged in. <clears throat> we can see that we've done that here. So we have disconnected the white wire from here, the only one that was available because these two are underneath in the sheath. We're not touching those. Disconnect the white wire. And what do we do? We brought it over to this side, terminal three. And the other end of that white wire, if you're wondering which one is, they don't spell it out very clear, but it's actually the motor lead <clears throat> okay so in my opinion they should say uh, remove white wire lead from extending from motor at terminal one and reconnect it over to terminal three because this is the white lead from the motor which originally connects to terminal one and then you connect to terminal three you can see this example here <clears throat> in the original wiring from the motor on this one. If you follow this white wire, it's currently connected underneath here to terminal number one. This side is terminal one. We unplug it and hook it up to terminal three side only after we remove the light that they tell you to remove in step number three. <clears throat> and that is it. That is the whole operation from 240 to 120 and also the difference between operating at 750 watts or 1500 watts. If you like this video at all and you think it's helpful, uh, give me a like. I haven't found any others like it, even though it's kind of a, excuse my dining room table here, but it took a while to figure this out and I just wanted to share the right way to do it. I have tested this one now uh, and it works perfectly. Everything works great. So, I'm going to let you know. Thank you.